you are ready and we are, uh, I'll start um, sharing a bit about uh, the pre-acceleration program, which is uh, one of the two main programs that B4I is actually leading. So what is this pre-acceleration program and what's the aim of this program? Um, the pre-acceleration program is a training and uh, the ambition of this program is to help aspiring entrepreneurs turning their ideas into viable businesses. So understand whether their ideas have a potential to survive in the market uh, and uh, uh, support uh, whoever is involved in this idea to uh, make it happen. How? Um, through a training, a dedicated training uh, that is uh, uh, entirely free and uh, that will lead participants from the idea stage to a minimum viable program stage. So a testable solution uh, on which you can get a direct feedback from the market. Um, how do we do this? Uh, we do this also by encouraging and fostering contamination uh, among people with different backgrounds. The program has been uh, uh, welcoming over the past editions, uh, uh, students, alumni, and researchers from several uh, Italian universities, but also research centers such as uh, the Italian Institute of Technology. Who is the target of the pre-acceleration program? Someone that has never engaged before into an entrepreneurial venture. Uh, you could be a student, you could be an alumnus, you can be someone working and doing something else uh, at the moment, uh, um, the way the program is structured with session happening on Saturdays, Saturday morning is really like meant to facilitate the attendance of those that are either studying or working uh, uh, full time. So in order to accommodate their needs as well. Uh, what's the development stage of the idea that this program is aiming at supporting? Uh, really like very initial stage, uh, something very embryonic. Uh, maybe you have already done some research about the market, competitors, so you have some preliminary ideas about those aspects, but maybe you haven't fully engaged into the validation of these ideas. So getting a sense of whether there is actually a demand for this in the market. So really early stage. What kind of topics are we covering uh, in this training program? We focus a lot on validation. Many of the startups that we have been supporting uh, over these uh, uh, two years uh, have discovered through validations that there wasn't really a demand for what they had in mind. So they pivoted a bit and they understood that actually what was more promising about their idea was something else. So we put a lot of emphasis on the validation aspects. We call the customer discovery and market sizing, of course. There are specific sessions on digital marketing and rocking, MVP design, financial modeling, fundraising, and pitching. We also have a session on uh, how to build a startup team and how to motivate and retain people that work on, for your startup. Uh, we really believe uh, uh, that the team is one of the key assets of a startup, so we put a lot of emphasis on that as well. What are the criteria to participate uh, into this program? So you need to be in a team of at least two people. I, rece I received several messages on my LinkedIn from people that were saying, okay, but I'm a solo entrepreneur. I don't have a teammate. So we can discuss this in the Q&A as well. But for the purpose of this program, uh, the idea is that you should be at least two. What do we expect from you? As I said, the program is structured in a way that you can still keep working or studying. Uh, so we don't require you to devote full time uh, to the pre-acceleration program, but we expect that you attend weekly session on Saturday mornings. We monitor, uh, we monitor your progress throughout the program. There are scheduled check checkpoints at which we review the progress that each team has been doing uh, according to specific asset aspects and milestones that are set in advance. Um, depending on this program and this progress, uh, we decide who is having access to the final demo day. We have an internal demo day that is open to all the startups that participate in the program. And we have an external demo day in which we involve also professional experts and investors which instead is only open to those startups that we deem mature enough to um, be exposed to the type of audience. 
Now let's go more in depth into the program structure and the resources that are made available by BFRI to support uh, you as an aspiring entrepreneur. The sessions are highly interactive. Uh, they are four hour session, as I said, held on Saturday mornings over 11 weeks. So far we have been keeping these sessions online where possible. Uh, we will aim to have a few sessions uh, on campus. Uh, so far we had the final session, uh, the final demo day um, on campus at Bocconi and uh, uh, the all other sessions, we run them online. Um, there is a lot of practical training involved, some conceptual foundation, but a lot of practical training. So during those Saturdays, you will apply the concept that you will learn from Stabucconi professors and experts on the different topics that I highlighted on your own project. So the application of those concepts of those tools is something we really put a lot of emphasis on. I already talked about uh, these checkpoints. We have three checkpoints throughout the program. Uh, one checkpoint after the first four sessions, uh, the second one after the following four, and then a final one, which is the internal demo day. Um, each team is supported by a dedicated mentor. Throughout the program, you will be paired with a mentor, and this person is typically an alumnus or someone that is really experienced in the specific um, type of venture you are engaging in. So the matching and the pairing we are doing is really a careful one, and we try to make the most of these uh, uh, mentorship support that we offer. You are also offered as a participant some legal counseling on issues such as GDPR, uh, intellectual property, and legal setup. So understanding how you can address those issues. And of course, given uh, uh, the large network of Bocconi corporate and institutional partner, you can have access to them to uh, start thinking about initial uh, pilot projects for your startup uh, or exploring also uh, some funding options. What are the key dates of the pre-acceleration program? We just concluded uh, the fourth batch, and uh, but the key dates for the fifth batch um, are the program is starting on February 26th and running until May 21st. So uh, there is a selection process after application close on the 9th of January. Uh, we will review all the application. There is a two-step selection process. First, the screening. Uh, uh, during this initial screening stage, we decide who is going to the interview stage or not. And then we interview typically per batch 30 to 40 startups. And uh, we welcome to the program uh, typically 15 to 16 startups per batch. Um, the program ends on May 21st, as I said. And the idea is that by that time, most of the startups will have a minimum viable product. There is a final demo day, and when I talk about final demo day, I talk about the one uh, involving also uh, potential investors that uh, will uh, take place in early July 2022. We have a sizable pool of mentors with a variety of expertise, uh, and uh, they are really like uh, a great resource. They devote their time, they are all giving back to the institution, and they are really eager to support uh, young and energetic entrepreneurs as you are. So really like people with different backgrounds, different expertise, different industries, uh, a lot of resources to tap into. We have also institutional partners. Uh, we have an institutional partnership with Poteco in Milano, uh, Bicocca University and University of Milan. And of course, with the Italian Institute of Technology, which I already mentioned. We also have some operational partners, uh, such as Invitalia, Kilometro Rosso, Plug and Play, and Levagon. Uh, and all these partners really like um, help us uh, providing access to an additional pool of resources. As participants in B4I program, this applies both to the pre-acceleration and the pre acceleration program, you have access also to a series of perks, discounts, uh, resources you can use for the purpose of developing your startup. Here you see just an overview of the different um, service providers we have partnership with. 
Now, uh, this is a picture we took some time ago for this uh, last batch. We had over 300 applications, 16 selected teams, more than 50 hours of training, uh, 17 speakers, and more than 60 hours of mentorship sessions. As I said, each team is paired with a dedicated mentor, so 16 teams, 16 mentors. Here you have an overview of the different startups uh, that we had uh, uh, since our start in spring 2020. So batch one, batch two, we are already at the end of batch four. So if you uh, start with us, you will be participating in batch five. We have startups operating really in different, uh, I mean, working on different type of ideas, some related to sustainability, uh, some related to um, food delivery, uh, ghost kitchen, uh, all sorts of ideas. Uh, there has been a lot uh, of emphasis, especially in the last batch, which is the one you see here uh, um, named as batch four, on sustainable issues. So a lot of solution uh, related to uh, recyclable uh, packaging, uh, uh, such as uh, zero impact or uh, uh, on recycling of food waste. Uh, but we also had ideas that were applying artificial intelligence uh, um, and uh, other type of solutions, such as uh, the very ambitious one, Glass Up, you may have heard of, like uh, um, addressing the problem of glacier smelting. So really a variety of ideas a variety of people uh, you can have uh, uh, the opportunity to interact with. So after having uh, received all this information from me, are you ready for our pre-acceleration journey? What are the steps to apply? There is a step one, which entails you going to the B4I website and sharing your personal details. There is a step two that involves you creating a profile on our MetaBeta platform. Only after you have created this profile, the application is completed. So please keep this in mind. Uh, sharing your personal details is not enough to complete the application. There is a detailed guide for application on our website as well. So I would really encourage all of you to familiarize with the information provided in that guide. Step three, um, in case you are selected and you are contacted uh, um, to arrange an interview, please be responsive and uh, we'll try to accommodate the interview schedule also with your needs. As I said, application are ready until January 9th, the 9th, and here you find the QR code uh, that links to the application. So thank you very much. Uh, I hope you got a, a clear overview of what the pre-acceleration program is and what our ambition is with this program. I leave the floor to my colleague, uh, Sasha. Sasha. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Monica. Thank you for, for the presentation about pre-acceleration. Everyone who joined uh, uh, the meeting, the webinar during the presentation, just to tell you uh, all the questions uh, we will answer after the presentation, I hope it's like in 10 minutes. Uh, you can type them in the chat uh, during you uh, listen, uh, listen to the presentation or later you can just raise your hand and, and, and ask the question. So I will do my uh, presentation and I hope it will be uh, also interested, like Monica did about the pre-acceleration. So let's share the screen. And uh, probably you already heard lots of the time. Share the screen. You you see it. You you hear me well. So let's start, guys. So my name is Sasha. I'm the acceleration program manager. And uh, what is exactly uh, will happen in this presentation? I would like to answer on three questions. What is the acceleration program? How does the acceleration program support startups? and who are we are looking for in the program. So acceleration is built to support projects from the MVP, minimum viable product stage to scale up. Two main principles in our process, entrepreneurs focus on their product and customer. And the B4I team removes obstacles in the company creation, facilitates networking, share knowledge and creates opportunities. Our main goal uh, is to leverage Bocconi's network and knowledge to provide strategic support to you, to the startups with capital, talent, customers, uh, as well as to establish a new company creation culture favoring scalability. In the next slides, uh, we are going to see in details what the acceleration program includes. So first of all, uh, uh, sorry. 
first of all, uh, we have targeted uh, workshops about the hiring, sales, marketing, finance, fundraising, and pitching. Um, we have the partnership with the third party services providers, uh, also known as Perks, and Monica already shared them uh, before, to give free and discounted services. As well, startups receive digital marketing support, investor community, legal and hiring support. We fund each startup with 30,000 euros cash for up to 5% equity. Our term sheet is available on the website. So you can see and, uh, and also check uh, with, uh, with your uh, legal uh, party. So with anyone that you, uh, that you believe uh, could be checked. Uh, our program, uh, our batch, it's two times per year. We select up to 10 startups for four months program. The program is a full-time uh, commitment. We expect that, uh, that the founders work only on this, uh, on the startup. Uh, let's see uh, on the macro level of the program. The program is divided in four stages. So we will take these four months. So the first week is a checkup when the startups meet internal and external people of, uh, of the team to see about the legal issues, business, UX, UI, product, to receive the feedback and to see how to scale the project during the four months, which goals they need to set up, which issues the, they have. Then we have three blocks on the product and market. So we will check about the logo, press and communication, UX, product development, as well as we have marketing and sales where startups more focus on the business development, working on KPI. And the final is a fundraising. More attention on the pitch, the Polish pitch, uh, how to speak with the investors, how to maintain the relations with them. All the events, it's to facilitate connections and create opportunities for startups. Starts from the first month. The first, the first event is advisor day where a startup can find a potential advisor or mentor. The difference between them, the advisor is someone who believes in the projects and would like to be on the longer uh, period, more than four months. The mentor as well who believe, but would like to give the support on the short period, one month, three months. So we uh, help startups to find these people to have this experience uh, to improve some side of their business. Another type of the events that we have is a sneak peek. So we invite corporates, companies interested in starting collaboration with startups, it could be pilots, uh, and the people who can give feedback on making better product and service. And the final event, demo day, where when the selected startups present their results with a fundraising roadmap. The important uh, part that not all the startups that who, which started the program will present, only which are ready for fundraising. Those who didn't participate this time, we uh, help them in the one-to-one -one connections with the investors. So the main goal, as I tell at the beginning, we uh, remove obstacles for the entrepreneurs to uh, facilitate fundraising, the product development. On the micro level, after uh, listening to the macro, on the micro level, teams work with an agile methodology, Scrum. Scrum, it's a framework that helps teams work together, uh, much like a rugby team, uh, where it gets its name, uh, when they train for the big game. So Scrum encourages teams to learn through experiences self-organize self while working on the problem and reflect and reflect on their wins and loses to improve continuously. So with a Scrum, a product is built in iterations called sprints that break down big complex projects into bite-sized pieces. If you imagine some, the program for months, it's a very, you, you can have the big objective to big goals on the tech and the product. But how to achieve this? You just divide it in small pieces of the two weeks on the sprint and you will work on it. You'll, it, it helps you to measure what you did, what you need to, uh, what you need to change. 
So in, 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 in these sprints with these business and tech goals, at the end of every two weeks, there is a checkpoint. A meeting in pair with another startup. So imagine that the community, that the acceleration program have other startups with which you can learn much more by being just alone. Because when you participate every time in this checkpoint, being in co-working, you learn that all start, uh, um, every startup has the same problems, but how they, uh, how they fix them, it can contribute you to, 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 to go uh, much, much, much faster. So after these discussions with, uh, with acceleration team, with another startup, we'll try to find the way how to solve your issues and accelerate your process. So while our program has a broad approach and it's open to everyone and every business sector, we offer deeper knowledge and specialized support and network on three specific vertical tracks, digital tech, sustainability, and made in Italy. Each of them is guided by experienced figures with market knowledge. Massimo della Ragione, Stefano Pogutz and Gabriela Loyacono. They can make the introduction with corporate according to your needs and your stage. Startups need to be proactive, to use all possibilities on a wide scale. We, we, we love proactive people because the program, as you can imagine, you enter, you have lots of the people who can help you, but then uh, it's on, on your side to use everything. We will push you, but... Uh, that the proactiveness uh, pays back. Another point, it's the speakers. Uh, speakers for workshops include entrepreneurs, investors, and vertical experts. Uh, it's a, one of the possibility when you participate in the workshops to receive insights on the topic and also remain in contact with them. And by being proactive, speakers can, can make an introduction to their network. There is an additional support for your legal part legal clinics. It's a specialized program of Bocconi University offering professional legal assistance. They, they are offered in partnership with established Italian law firms that you see on the, on the slide and notary offices together with selected students from the Bocconi School of Law. Generally, startups work on such points as um, the drafting of commercial and contracts with customers and suppliers, compliance with privacy regulations, the, the protection of intellectual property, review of agreements between the shareholders and tax issues connected with the business model chosen by startup. So there are lots of things that at the beginning of the program, during the checkup, you'll discuss and you know on what you can work during the, the, the four months program. After that, we support you on the growth part. With the digital marketing support for four months, you work on the short and medium strategy our internal experts with whom you, you work, use the learning by doing approach. So when you have hypotheses, you test and you implement and so on. If something doesn't work, you just on the next week, on the next sprint, you will, uh, you will learn what didn't work. And you can hire the additional people uh, into your team who can grow during the program in X times faster, in 10 times faster. Remember that by, 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 by being at the beginning, um, two, three, four, five people in the team, you uh, receive the additional support from the acceleration program. But then you'll need to think about how I can grow much faster. And in this case, you will hire additional people who will support and, and grow together with you. Perks, uh, Monica mentioned, it's a free discounted services. Uh, from the cloud CRM digital marketing will uh, add new one when you arrive to the program and ask uh, additional uh, additional programs so that we can reach uh, uh, to the providers and have them in the program. Uh, on campus, you have the access to the shared space with other startups and program partners in our co-working space in Via Bocconi 6. And the one uh, after that one, uh, let's answer who are we looking for in the program? It's a team of at least two people who have taken a full-time commitment to their early stage startup. 
which could already already receive some uh, funding. But what we uh, what we expect that the people when the program starts, they work all the time on the on the project. Have some measurable indicators of the market validation, um, such as uh, users uh, uh, or it's a paying customers pipeline of potential users or pipeline of the potential customers. If you have revenues, good. But we would like to see that you validated your idea, that there is a need from the market who says to you, yes, we want your, we want your idea, we want your project. Propose an innovative solution to a real need in a growing market. So think also when you present your market is a small one, it's a big, how much? Is it like something new and it will grow in three, three years and will become bigger? So we, we, we like big markets or the, the new one, but uh, which is, is going to grow. And also to be constitute as a limited company before program starts. Just as uh, if you are registered, we can, uh, we can give you money, we can invest in you. And uh, the spring 2022 20, batch is going to follow the calendar. So the, first, the 7th of March, it's the beginning of the program. We have, we go through then six weeks stages, product and market, marketing sales, fundraising, and it ends in July with the demo day. One of the main strengths of the acceleration program is the startup community. Uh, Monica mentioned to you, I want to mention to you, these startups uh, the, from the spring uh, and fall 2020 batches finished and the spring 21 also finished. Right now we are in the current fall 2021 batch. I suggest you uh, to also to contact them if you have some questions about the program, what worked, uh, some startups uh, could be in your business model, some startups could be uh, in your market. So you can ask how the program went, uh, if there is something that uh, you can be benefited by participating. When startups finish the program, we still continue working with them with the light support. Here's the point. Um, as all startups have the same problems, they do the same steps, for sure with different approach. So you can find the support and knowledge base to create synergy by collaborating with them. Startups are from fashion, health, finance, manufacturing, logistics, and so on. So use them also to ask about the program. Application is uh, open till the midnight of the uh, 9th of uh, January. So if you uh, would like to apply, we, um, we welcome you to use uh, our website and uh, go this, through this short link. Uh, with this, I finished the presentation and wanted to thank you for listening. And uh, we will jump to our presentation uh, to the, uh, the Q&A session. I leave uh, also my email if you want to stay in contact. Thank you very much. Monica? Okay, thanks, Sasha. Shall we browse through the question? I see that Sylvia has already addressed some of those, but maybe we can just go through them and see whether there is anyone outstanding. So there was a question from uh, Azabi. Uh, is this open to master students too? Yes, it's open to everyone. Uh, from every country, uh, irrespective of whether you are a student or someone who is working, uh, undergraduate, graduate students, uh, um, executive education, I mean, it's open really to everyone. Azabi, do you want to add anything? I can see you have raised your uh, hands. Oh, I think that was a mistake. I'm going to put it down now. Okay, no worries at all. So I can see there is a question from Emma uh, about how mentors are assigned. Uh, you don't choose your own mentor. We try to pair you with uh, um, the most appropriate mentor um, we have in the pool. Uh, and if the mentor you have been assigned, uh, um, you find is not exactly like uh, um, as effective as a match as uh, you might need, we can review this decision and also um, pair you with someone else. Uh, I see, I can see a, a raised hand there as well. 
Yes, I did raise my Hi. hand. Hello, thank you so much for the presentation. It was really informative. Uh, I had a bunch of questions for the acceleration program. Mm -hmm. um, so the they said that 5% equi equity is required to fund us. So is this like non-negotiable? Like it's an upfront like 5% to give us a 30K um, or like... I will, I will go to answer. You would like to tell all the questions. Oh, you? would you prefer me? Ask no, me no, no, I will answer. I will answer. So, but, so we, we give 30,000 to the startup. Uh, it's set up to 5%. It depends if the startup already raised the, in the, fund, the funds and the valuation more than 600, because 30,000 is a 5%. It's a, we will convert after the 180 days in, on that valuation. If during the 180 days, startup receives another fund, another fundraising, we will convert on, on, on that valuation. So like you will give more than 30K or? We, we will take less, uh, uh, less equity. Uh, okay. And this uh, 30,000, is it like upfront that's given to the teams or it depends on your need? It's at the, at the, at the beginning of the first months um when the investment agreement is signed when there is a due diligence uh, done uh, we will uh, send the money to the startup uh, bank account okay and um when you said we have to have a minimum viable product for example if um i want to build a fintech company of course i require like software developers that have um, a high level of expertise which i would have to hire and I would like to use the funds to be able to do some. So to be able to have a uh, minimum viable product, if I just hire like a software developer for like a very B-tech version of like the website, which is just like landing pages and how I would want the final product to look, would that be enough to be considered as a minimum viable product or? Mm, so it's, it, it, I, I will try to answer in, in, in with, with two uh, things. We, uh, in pre-acceleration and acceleration, we uh, put mm, very big attention on the team. Okay, all right. Uh, on the team, so how it's done, uh, which expertise they have, and then we will check also the, what they did, what is a valid validation. So in your case, a FinTech MVP, I, um, I don't know exactly what it is right now, but you need to show that there is uh, potential clients or you validated already if it's a I don't know application that uh, uh, new PayPal so you need to show just an example of fintech you need to show that there are people who already maybe signed the contract with you it's a b2b uh, and and they just will uh, use your application since uh, the, 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 the application is, is born or you already have the website of the I don't know 10,000 people registered in the waiting list. All right, okay. So, so you have it, to, so you need um, already like signed up user base to be able to like, just to be considered? Think about, uh, you need to show that the market needs your product. So how you would like to, 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 to show I, I, the answer, uh, we have, one, we interviewed 110 people and they said, yes, it's not validation. We interviewed 100, 100,000 people and they paid us already 10, 10 euros. So right. we have in our account 12,000 12, uh, 12, euros. It sounds. What if, what if um, the market you're trying to enter doesn't have, like it's so niche that it just doesn't exist out there. Like it's the intersection of like three big markets, but no one has like, like, you know, brought the intersection. So you just don't have some, like a competitor. So then how do you, like, how would you be able to, like? We receive different uh, uh, projects. Uh, we uh, evaluate them on the potential, what the team could be done. So um, if I can advise you, describe why this team can do this one in this short period. Right. About the market, present that this is a market, what is a number, why you think it's a market that... Uh, that can have your product, uh, uh, can have your product. So instead of like quantitative proof, is it qualitative proof enough? Like the team members have potential and there's uh, like news or like the industry is building, <laughs> like just, just our numbers are like super important. Like you have to have people that are- like, You need to have a team. You need to have a, a team and you need to have- Like in terms of customers. 
Do you need uh, it? I, I, it's difficult to answer at the moment to tell you if it's a project yes or no, but you need to show that there is a proof that your project uh, is needed from the market. Okay. One of the uh, proof, it's a, a customer base. It's a, it could be waiting list. Okay. It could be a, a first revenue. Okay. All right, that explains it. Thank you so much. Thank you for questions. I can see Sasha that there is another raise then, Sanshit. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, thank you for the presentation. So we are trying to build a made in Italy uh, startup mm -hmm. for, for a luxury brand. And we currently one mem team member is, is, uh, is working full time and one team member is not because we are trying to support each other. So, and we are not registered yet, but we are in the definition phase and our branding phase, everything is starting very soon. And even we are finalizing the vendors for production. So which, which uh, of the two paths, acceleration or pre-acceleration would be the best for us, first of all. And second, is it negotiable that one team member can be there 100 you know, for the entire time and one can support? So since there are questions also related to the time commitment, uh, I'll let uh, Sasha address your question first and then I'll follow up on that. Thank you. Thank you, Sanchit, for the question. I would say um, it depends what you would like to receive uh, after participation, participating in pre-acceleration, acceleration, what's your goal? If it's your goal to bring that person full time, uh, if your goal, uh, um, how to say, to, to work on, on, on the project uh, because you need uh, to have the support more constantly, um, like full time, you need to think about that uh, that person have, has to come uh, to become full time in the program. Um, only because being one and a half person in, in, in the team, you will not take all the value of the program. Let me add to that, Sanchit. So if you have done already some validation and, uh, and by validation we mean you have been doing uh, like a proper uh, investigation in the market that there is a real need for what you are proposing. Uh, and if you have addressed uh, several of the aspects we covered through the pre-acceleration program uh, and you already have some traction, which I don't think is the case, you could think of applying for the acceleration program, provided that there is a, uh, some time commitment that you and your co-founders can devote to that, as Sasha just mentioned. If you still need to engage in all these steps, so a proper validation, uh, which can be also convincing for uh, uh, future fundraising uh, um, kind of routes you want to undertake, then I would probably encourage you to go through the pre-acceleration program. You can work on that properly, um, it's compatible with your full-time engagements. Uh, in the meanwhile, you build a more robust solution, uh, um, then you can think of applying for the acceleration program. Thank you. Thank you, Monica. No problem. Uh, Emma and then Lorenzo. Hi, thank you for the opportunity to ask questions. So um, let's say this startup has a bigger team of around five to six people. Um, and they're participating or they will participate in another acceleration program. Is there a limit to that? So Sasha, as concerned the compatibility with um, another acceleration program, do you want to uh, elaborate on that? Yes, yes, thank you. Uh, Emma, it's a good question, thank you. Um, I mean, do, it depends what, in, uh, there is another program acceleration, how much time you need to be on there. But in general, being two programs that is a full time, it will be not good from our experience. It's not good for, for the startup following one and the second program. What we advise to decide why you need to have this program, what's the value, and then decide uh, to, to just do one program. Perfect. Thank you. And then another question. Um, is it possible to first do in a batch the pre-acceleration program and then follow up with the acceleration program? Yes, of course, that's possible. And we try to uh, kind of uh, encourage that as much as possible as well, which means that 
some of the teams that we have been hosting in the pre-acceleration program, uh, they uh, were accepted into the acceleration program. While this is possible and it happens, is not to be taken for granted, which means that it really depends on the quality of the application that we receive for the acceleration program. So uh, your proposal needs to be competitive enough, but of course we have um, kind of a special eye on the um, startups that we already are seeing through the pre-acceleration program, because we can also uh, judge uh, the energy commitment uh, and uh, kind of seriousness about their efforts towards the startup. Perfect. So not Thank to you. be taken for granted, but of course we hope so. <laughs> okay, perfect. Thank you very much. No problem. Lorenzo. Yes, thank you. Hello, hello, and thank you for the opportunity uh, to ask questions and for the presentation. So my question is about the pre-acceleration program because so me, myself and a team um, are planning on, on applying and so, kind of collect, collecting the documents and all the, the things we have to prepare. I simply wanted to ask kind of what are the most important things that you value apart from the team and the idea itself, maybe things you want to see that, that we really uh, prepare well, uh, maybe, you know, like the, the market around it, the competition, et cetera. What are things you truly value uh, when, when seeing an, an applicant for the mm -hmm. big program? So of course we value uh, the team, Mm -hmm. So whether in the team there are enough skills that uh, can make you uh, kind of credible uh, about working uh, uh, on this project. Uh, we also uh, evaluate really carefully like uh, the gap you have identified and uh, uh, your unique value proposition. So what makes you different from what is already out there? Um, if there is uh, some market analysis, of course, is very welcome. Uh, and you, if you have already kind of identified competitors and what makes you different from those competitors, of course, is the plus. Uh, we will go through the market sizing uh, again through the pre-acceleration program. So there is time to work on that. A real plus is if you have done already some validation, which means you have been going out there and trying to understand, as I said earlier, whether there is a, a need for your solution. So if you have that, very welcome. If you have that, we are not going to penalize you if the idea is good and we can see some potential because anyways, we will go through validation again uh, throughout the program. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. No problem. So I don't see another other raise then, so we can still browse through the different question in the chat. Sasha, Sanchit, do you have another question? Uh, the last one, very quick. Do we yes. have an opportunity for one-to-one -one consultation uh, with you guys to understand our better our situation and what should be applied to? So if you feel that after this webinar, you have still some doubts about what could be the appropriate program with us uh, for you, uh, we can definitely uh, interact also on a one-on-one -on -one basis. The idea of having this webinar today is to avoid that. We are currently experiencing a very large volume of requests, but of course it's possible and we are all available uh, uh, to address your specific questions and to help on that side. So please get in touch. We were already in touch, I think, on LinkedIn. So I remember uh, you asking me these questions. Uh, so definitely get in touch with us and uh, we can follow up. Thank you, thank you so much. No problem. So, Alfonso. Hi, thank you. Um, I got two questions. The first is about the possibility of taking part to the pre-acceleration program, although one of the members of our team will leave for the exchange, so for the six months, he won't be based mm -hmm. in Milan. And the second one is about, it's a bit more on the questions like that, um, are part of our application, like on MetaBeta. Uh, like what's, what should be the difference uh, between the question on, on team at the very beginning of the application and the one that is again on team in additional questions? Like uh, what aspect should we stress more in the two? Okay, thank you. Okay, as concerns the first question, whether there is any limitation related to the fact that one of you will be on exchange, there's no limitation. We are, the program is run mainly online, if not entirely. Uh, so there is the possibility to attend also remotely. 
we had already some uh, attendees this year that were connecting uh, from the US and from other countries, so definitely not a problem. For the second question, uh, when you enter the information about uh, uh, the different uh, uh, founder and founders, you should specify your background, uh, uh, your prior uh, professional experience, if you have any, and what would be also the idea, I mean, the tentative role that you envisage for yourself and your co-founders in the startup. So you might want to be more concise, maybe uh, in the first part and be elaborated a bit more uh, in the following one. Great, thank you. No problem. So now getting back to the chat, um, there was a question uh, from someone about uh, young workers, not Bocconi alumni. I think we addressed that already, saying that the program is open to everyone. Will this presentation be recorded for week later? Yes, they will be recorded. So you have that opportunity as well. Uh, all team members have to be based in Milan. As concerned, the pre-acceleration program we just said is not a problem. As concerned, the acceleration program, I let um, Sasha uh, address this question. In, in general, we started the program online at the beginning. Right now, we're in a hybrid mode and we, uh, we would like to remain for the next batch. It means if you are not in, in the... Um, in Milan, you uh, you would like to join online and everything. You can follow it. Um, what worked better for the teams uh, who were in the co-working space or who could uh, come at least uh, uh, once per week? That they created more bonding with another entrepreneurs. Uh, at the beginning of the program, we invite all the teams to join for the first week physically, and then who can be stay in Milan, they remain. And then at the end of the program, there is a demo day where we also ask everyone to come. So it will be much easier for everyone to, to, meet, to meet investors or the potential, uh, potential uh, customers. So the my answer is uh, we are more flexible uh, because the, there is no geographical uh, thing to make the startup. Okay, thanks, Sasha. Next question, once the application is sent, uh, will you directly decide if it goes under acceleration or pre-acceleration program or if you have to clarify in advance um, in the application uh, you submit whether you want to apply for one of the two. So now when you apply, uh, there is an option for you, of course, to select a specific program or also to flag whether in case you apply for the acceleration program and you are rejected, you would consider also uh, attending uh, the pre-acceleration program. So if that's the case for you, you can flag that option. And of course, uh, we review the application in that case also for the pre-acceleration program. Next question. Um, did the business have to be in Italy? I think Silvia already uh, addressed that, saying that you don't need to be incorporated in Italy. Um, and we also addressed the question about uh, the need of having the team members all based in Milan. Uh, the members of the team have to be shareholder of the startup, Sasha? No, I mean, no, we, uh, all the members who do startup, they don't need to be uh, founders, but the founders, the majority of the, how to say, the, the people who own the startups, in the majority, they need to participate in the, in, the, in the acceleration program. So there is not like founding team doesn't participate and they just send the, the employee to participate. There is, non, there is no sense for the startup to be accelerated. So we had a question about uh, members being in exchange and we already addressed that question. Um, Lorenzo asks, when we will know if you are going to be selected for the program? As you know, uh, application closed on January the 9th. Uh, I explained earlier while talking about the pre-acceleration program that we uh, have a two-stage selection process. First, we screen all the application and we shortlist a set of application that then uh, we invite for a follow-up interview. At the end of that, uh, we communicate our decision uh, uh, to everyone. So as concerned the pre-acceleration program, uh, you can expect to receive um, a communication from us uh, since the program is starting at the end of February by the beginning of February. So ideally three weeks in advance. 
as concerned the acceleration program, I'll let Sasha um, address that question. Uh, thank you, Monica. Uh, the acceleration program starts on the 7th of March. March. On the 28th of February, uh, all the startups uh, will, be, will receive uh, the notice if they, uh, uh, if they didn't pass. But in, in general, what you can expect that at the beginning of February, the first uh, startups can receive only invitation to have the interview or receive uh, the email that you are not passed. So if you didn't receive, you are, you, uh, you are refused, you will, uh, you will need to, to wait till the end of, uh, of February. Okay. Always Lorenzo was asking, can I refuse if I'm going to be selected from you? Of course, Lorenzo, you can refuse. We won't come and chase you. And so <laughs> you're really free to refuse in case uh, you find that uh, this opportunity is not um, matching your needs anymore. Uh, Matteo, we are in three and we will need a more experienced app developer. Would it be possible to find the additional app developer within the acceleration program or is our responsibility to find one before? Sasha. I will take. Um, Matteo, we have um, uh, Boolean Careers Partnerships. It's a tech bootcamp, full stack, Levagon, uh, uh, full stack uh, uh, tech bootcamp. So we will uh, help you by matching with them to find the people who can join your team. But if you need experienced app developer, what we can do, uh, we work on the job description and we share through our channels. So it's both, uh, we help you, but uh, it's also up to you uh, to search uh, for the people. But of course, we facilitate this process both yeah. in the pre-acceleration and acceleration program, so you can count on us uh, for that. Lorenzo. Yeah, sorry, just quickly for, uh, just to clarify for the pre-acceleration. So we, you, the January 9th, it's the, it's for applying and then we get an interview, right? Not uh, everyone. So what we do is we, sh we screen all the application and uh, we score, we give them scores and uh, for, um, we make a selection, a short listing of those that we deem more promising. Uh, and then we invite uh, those teams for the interviews. All right, and the interviews will take place more or less when towards after? the end of January. By the end of January. Okay, perfect. Okay. By the end of January, at latest uh, the first week of February. Perfect, perfect. Thank you. No problem. So there was another question. Uh, we have to be constituted before the program or before the application. So as concerned, the pre-acceleration program. Uh, being a legal entity is not a requirement. As concerned, the acceleration program. I let Sasha explain how it works. Mm, at the beginning of the program, you should be uh, uh, constitute. It means if you receive, uh, if you are not uh, um, constitute like the, uh, the startup innovative or SRL, if, uh, if you receive um, our um, invite to participate in the acceleration, in that time, you need to, uh, to do everything to constitute. On our side, we have the context and we help you to facilitate re the registration. Why we need it? In this case, we can give you the money. Okay, so Federico was asking, can pre-acceleration get into the fundraising stage? So we had several startups that uh, by the end of the program, uh, they set up the company, so they uh, got incorporated uh, and they also got into the fundraising stage. We currently have one of our startups that uh, just, uh, the program just ended and they already raised some money, so that's definitely possible. Um, we already addressed the issue of being incorporated for the acceleration program. Emma was asking after the pre-acceleration program, will the company be a constituted limited company? That's not a requirement, Emma. We had um, several startups, they started with an idea. And I mean, this happens all the time in, in uh, entrepreneurship. So you uh, realize that probably you were too much in love with your solution and there wasn't really a need in the market for that. So. For some uh, teams, um, this becomes also like a reality check and uh, they realize that probably that was not the best idea and they should focus on something else for the future. So it's not uh, necessarily an outcome of the program. Um, 
Alessandro, we already said that uh, you don't need to be a Bocconi student to participate. It's really open to everyone. Um, Davide was asking, the application step for the pre-acceleration in the slide you showed, there was no slide deck required. That's required in the application. If you check the how to apply guide, uh, um, Davide, you would see that you need to upload uh, a slide deck. Yes, I hope it's clear now. So can students from other universities be part of their teams? They definitely can. Um, specifically, Francesco is saying I need a software engineer from Politecnico. Of course, he can participate. I could see that then Silvia had addressed that. Lorenzo, we don't have metrics of revenues. We will launch our app only in March. Can they applicate to the, to the acceleration program, Sasha? It's, it's very how to say on, the, on to answer it uh, depends on the things you can you can participate in acceleration program if you show that the before validation what is a mock-up of the applications if you have already SDK of application if we can use it if there is some demo so you will see the the the, the, the job that you did and it just the, the launch in March it's okay. If you just say that you will launch and you uh, haven't done any uh, validation, you didn't uh, go to speak with the potential users, anything, it's, uh, it's a mistake that many startups can do. Work on the product and then validate. What we, uh, what we check, that you spoke with the customers, you build the product, you spoke with the customers, you launch your product. So my answer, yes, you can, uh, but the, the, we need to check your application. Okay, then another question. Uh, um, can you be a full-time student and apply for acceleration? We had, we had such. It depends, it depends uh, on the team, how many members, uh, full-time students, uh, um, how much time they need to be in the university. Uh, if it's uh, all people and uh, I don't know, half day in the university, half day on the startup, no. It didn't work well, not for university, not for the startup. What could be done that if you accept it in the acceleration program, take this one year uh, pause, work on your startup and see, maybe you'll be the famous dropout and you will uh, launch this startup and then you don't need to finish university. But if the startup didn't work, you will come back to university. And then the final question from Ayush. Can we send a video in the NTD in our pitch slide deck? Or would you just prefer a traditional slide deck? We had also received in the past um, videos uh, in the NTD in the pitch uh, slide deck. If you find it more effective, of course you can do. There's no limitation about that, as long as all the needed information are there. So if you think it's more effective, of course, go for it. But all the info that you would um, traditionally include in a slide deck need to be covered. Sasha, do you want to add anything? Um, no, you uh, you uh, you answered perfectly. I mean, video when it communicates better about your project, about your team, uh, we love it. Okay, last chance. We have one minute left, so if there are still questions, take this chance. If not, uh, we are really happy uh, to have uh, met you today virtually. We hope to meet you in person very soon. And of course, we encourage all of you to apply. If you still have doubts after this webinar, get in touch with us and we'll try to clarify these doubts by email or if possible, also through a more direct interaction. So thank you very much from my side. It was a pleasure and... Thank you very much, guys. Thank you for the question. Thank questions. you. Bye-bye. Have a good questions. weekend. Thank you bye so bye. much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.